This is a tutorial on understanding rational functions. A rational function, or a rational expression, is just an expression with a polynomial in both the numerator and the denominator. An easy way to recognize a rational function, or a rational expression, is that there is a variable in the denominator. Now, if you've studied inverse variation functions, you'll know that there's an x in the denominator. That makes inverse variation functions rational expressions or rational functions. But they're not the only kind of rational functions. Here I have y is equal to 2x squared minus 3x over 3x squared. Here I have an x squared in my denominator. But just because there's a variable down here, that makes this a rational function. Now you can have more than just monomials in your denominator. Here I have y is equal to negative 1 over x minus 2. This is a binomial, but again there's a variable in it, and it's in the denominator, so this is a rational function. Well now that we know that rational functions have variables in their denominators, that also means that rational functions have variable values that don't make sense. If I had the number 10, and I divided it by 1, or 2, well that would give me a number. 10 over 2 would be 5. 10 over 1 would be 10. But if I took 10 and divided it by 0, that wouldn't make any sense. Well, if I plugged in 0 for x, and this y is equal to x squared minus 7 over x, I would get 0 squared minus 7 over 0. 0 squared is 0, so I'd have negative 7 over 0. And again, you cannot divide by 0. So that means that in this function here, x can be any number we want it to, except x cannot equal 0. Because if it does, this function is undefined. Let's look at our next example. Here we have y is equal to x to the fifth plus 3x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus x minus 6 and that is all over x minus 4. Now again we cannot divide by 0. So if we look at just our denominator and I set that equal to 0, I could add 4 to both sides and I get x is equal to 4. Now if I do that, if I plug in 4 here, in our numerator we get a very large number. But in our denominator, 4 minus 4 is 0. And you, again, you cannot divide by 0. So in this rational function, x can be any number we want it to be, except x cannot equal 4. So now that we've talked about excluded values, let's talk about asymptotes. Asymptotes are just lines on a graph that represent the excluded values. So here I have y is equal to 1 over x. In this expression, x cannot equal 0. Also notice that there's no number that I can plug in for x and make y is equal to 0. If I plug in a very small number for x, I'll have 1 divided by a very small number and y will become very large. If I plug in a very large number for x, say a million, then y would be equal to 1 millionth. And while y would be very small, it's still not equal to 0. In fact, the larger number I plug in for x, the smaller y gets. But again, it'll never equal 0. So this function, y, also cannot equal 0. Well, notice the graph of this function approaches our x and y axis. Our x and y axis is when x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. So we have the asymptotes of x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. Our function gets very close to these asymptotes, but it will never ever actually touch them or cross them. Let's look at our next example. Here we have y is equal to 1 over x minus 2 plus 2. Notice by this graph that this also has two asymptotes. 
and I can draw them in, they'll look like this. These asymptotes are the lines y is equal to 2 and x is equal to 2. Now we can get the asymptote x is equal to 2 from our denominator right here. If x is equal to 2, then my denominator is 0. And that would make this function not make any sense. Now y is equal to 2, that's because this whole first term here, again, I can never make equal to 0. There's no number I can plug in for x that I can divide by 1 and make equal 0. So if this cannot equal 0, and then I add 2 to it, I'll always have 2 plus some number. So y can never equal 2 because I'm always adding some number to 2. So that is why this expression here approaches the line x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 2. But again, it never touches or crosses these asymptotes. Also notice that the only difference between these two graphs is that I have a minus 2 in my denominator. And that has shifted my asymptote to the right 2. And I've also added a constant term on the end, and that has shifted my horizontal asymptote up 2. So now let's look at these functions and see if we can find our asymptotes. Our first function is y is equal to 1 over x minus 2. Now my vertical asymptote I get from my denominator. I need this to never equal 0. So if I set x minus 2 equal to 0 and add 2 to both sides, I get the line x is equal to 2. This is the equation of my vertical asymptote because x can never equal 2 because that would make my denominator equal to 0. Also notice that there is no number that I can plug in for x that will make this equation equal to 0. There's no number I can divide 1 by that would make y equal to 0. So my horizontal asymptote then is y is equal to 0. Let's try this again. Here we have y is equal to 14 over x minus 4 plus 7. Now to find my vertical asymptote, I look at my denominator. I have x minus 4. If I set that equal to 0 and add 4, to both sides, I get x is equal to 4. Now, if x is equal to 4, my denominator is 0, which it cannot be. So I'll have the vertical asymptote of x is equal to 4. Now again, this first term here, there's no way I can divide 14 by any number and make it equal to 0. So this term can never equal 0. And then I'm adding 7 onto it. So it's always 7 plus some number is equal to y. So if I'm always adding some number to 7, that means y can never equal 7. So I end up with the horizontal asymptote of y is equal to 7. So now that we know how to find our asymptotes, let's talk about graphing a rational function. Here we're given y is equal to 3 over x plus 2 plus 1. Now, first step is to identify our asymptotes. Our horizontal is what makes our denominator equal to zero. So our asymptote would be x is equal to negative two, because if I plug in negative two, that makes my denominator zero, and this function would not make any sense. Now again, there's no way I can make this first term equal to zero. There's nothing I can divide the three by that would make this equal to zero. So we're always gonna have one plus some number, which means y can never equal one because we're always gonna add some number to one. So we have another asymptote as the line y is equal to one. So I've found my asymptotes and my next step is to plot them. So if I do that, they'll look something like this. And then our last step to graphing this is to make a table of values and we can select our x values at random except you want to make sure you pick x values that are on both sides of our vertical asymptote. So if we make a table 
the values of x that I'm going to choose are going to be negative 5, negative 3, negative 2.5, negative 1.5, negative 1, and positive 1. If I plug in negative 5 for x, I'll get y is equal to 3 over negative 5 plus 2 and then plus 1. Now negative 5 plus 2 is a negative 3. 3 divided by negative 3 is a negative 1 and then add 1 and you'll get y is equal to 0. If I plug in negative 3 for x, I'll get y is equal to 3 over negative 3 plus 2 and then plus 1. Negative 3 plus 2 is a negative 1. 3 divided by negative 1 is negative 3 and then plus 1 is negative 2. If I plug in negative 2.5, I get y is equal to 3 over negative 2.5 plus 2 and then plus 1. Negative 2.5 plus 2 is a negative half. 3 divided by a negative half would be negative 6 and then plus 1 and you get negative 5. If I plug in a negative 1.5, y is equal to 3 over negative 1.5 plus 2 and then plus 1. Negative 1.5 plus 2 is a positive half. 3 divided by a positive half is 6, and then plus 1 is positive 7. If I plug in negative 1, I'll have 3 over negative 1 plus 2, and then plus 1. Negative 1 plus 2 is a positive 1. 3 divided by a positive 1 is a positive 3. Add 1 and you get 4. And then plug in 1 for x. We'll have 3 over 1 plus 2 and then plus 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1 and then plus 1 and we get 2. So let's plot these points. Negative 5 and 0 is right here. Negative 3 and negative 2 is right there. Negative 2.5 and negative 5 is right here. Negative 1.5 and 7 is way up here. Negative 1 and 4 is right there. And 1, 2 would be right there. Now when we plot these, we know that our graphs get very close to the asymptotes when we get towards the end of our graph. So we'll connect these with a smooth line that approaches the asymptotes on both sides. And our graph will look something like this. So to graph a rational function, you first identify your asymptotes, you plot them, and then you make a table of values on either side of them and connect the dots. And that completes the tutorial on understanding rational functions.